This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So um, today I have come up with another Java uh, topic that is the concept of null. There are some really cool facts about okay the null keyword in Java and uh, what are the different uh, features available and how exactly this keyword can be defined. So we will see a couple of things with respect to null. Okay. So first of all, always remember guys that null is case sensitive because it's a keyword and keywords are written in Java always with small letter. <clears throat> so if you're defining any, let's see, I'm creating any object, OBJ is equal to capital null or something like this. This is not allowed, right? You can simply write only like this. So null is a keyword, right? You cannot write N U double L in capital letter also. This is also not allowed. Okay, so always it should be null like this. So this is case sensitive, right? <clears throat> so the the first thing is case sensitive. Always should be written in small letter. Second thing is reference variable, right? So let's see if I declare one. Uh, object reference over here, let's see <clears throat> one static object OBJ, right? Something like this. And if I try to access this particular, let's see, object OBJ. And if I try to access this particular, I can just print this OBJ, right? So default value of OBJ will be null, right? So if you run it, it will be null. You either you declare or not the default value of <clears throat> okay the object reference variable or any reference variable will be null similarly if you create let's see any static um, let's see string class the string str and you try to print str system dot order print and str if you don't define anything by default str will be null it's not only for object class it can be for any particular class Okay, like this. So let's see if I declare with okay one static NC. <clears throat> this is the reference of null concept, and uh, I simple print NC over here, and if you see NC will be null. So for the custom class, for the default class, and for the object class, for any kind of class reference, if you try to print directly, the default value will be null. Always remember this thing. Okay. So this is the second concept that default reference value will be none. Okay, so let me comment these guys. I don't want to print. Okay, what else? About null, there is a third concept is, okay, while doing auto boxing and unboxing or maybe casting. Let's say I declare one, okay, let me write it like this. Let's see, I simply say uh, integer i is equal to null. This can be defined integer i equal to null because this is in this integer is a wrapper class. This is not a normal <coughs> primitive uh, data type. So integer i is equal to null. And then if you try to define the same i to a primitive data type, right? It means simple if you write, let's say j is equal to i. If you write it like this, fine, and then you try to run, it will give you an error that null pointer exception. This is not allowed, okay? This is not allowed. Compiler will throw null pointer exception error if a null value is assigned to a primitive data type over here. So this is strictly not allowed. You cannot say that, okay, this is integer i equal to null, and this is also from integer family, and this is also from integer family. No, this is integer a class, and this integer is a primitive data type. Okay, so this is not allowed base, right? So this is a third concept about none. Fourth one is what else? About null is instance of, okay, operator. So I don't know, you guys are aware about it or not. So this is instance of operator, okay, is there. That's a keyword actually. So uh, let's see, I'll de uh, define integer uh, i is equal to null. 
and I define integer j is equal to 10. Okay. And then I try to print system dot auto print talent. I simply say that uh, j instance of keyword integer. If j is instance of integer, so j is instance of integer. Yes, j is instance of integer. So in that case, what exactly it will return? If it is instance of integer, it will return two. But if you write the same line with i, what will happen? i is the instance of integer let's see most of the people they give the wrong answer guys this time it will give you false although i is instance of integer but it is pointing to null right the reference currently is pointing to null object okay nothing there is nothing null means nothing so this reference is pointing to null so this is not the instance of integer right now okay when you assign the value then only Okay, then only the reference will be applied. Then only you can say that, okay, yes, this is the instance of integer or any specific class. Okay, so this is the fourth concept about none. Now, the fourth concept is very important. Static versus non-static. Okay, I'll do one thing. In this particular class, I'll create two more methods. Let's see, I create public one static method. Method, public static void some method right and I here I simply say okay I'm printing some something like this and I create one non static method that is public void and let's see send mail or send method simple and system dot auto print talent I simply say send so I have one static method that is some method and one non static method that is send method if now I'll do one thing, I just create the object of this particular class. So right now we are talking about static versus non-static with respect to null. Now see the carefully. I do one thing that uh, I create the object of this particular class. So okay, let's see uh, null pointer concept. Okay, and I create the object name is let's see obj is equal to new class name right so instead of creating the object i just create the reference and i give this reference to null it means the reference is there but it is not pointing to anywhere it is pointing to null now see it carefully it is pointing to null and if you quickly see the memory allocation for uh, some method and the send method let's see this is a java memory in this particular Java memory, it's divided into two parts. This is heap memory and this is the stack memory. And this is the static method at a common memory allocation is available. So the sum method is available over here. Right guys, the sum method is available over here. Fine. Now what will happen, now see it carefully. The moment I try to write, <coughs> now see, the moment I try to access obj dot send, I can see that obj dot send, obj dot send method I can access, and with a warning, it's saying that something that null pointer access because it's pointing to null. There is no object. Then how can you access? This is just a template. This is just a property of the class. There is no object got created of this class, so there is no memory actual physical memory allocation for send method. So how can you access that? This is just a template of the class. This is just a property of the class. So you cannot access without creating the object. So the moment you write obj dot sent, immediately it will give you an exception null pointer exception. Okay, null pointer exception will give it to you. Then what about obj? Obj got created. Although object, we haven't created the object, but we have created this obj. The reference got created. So what will happen, let's say this reference got created, this OBJ available over here inside this particular stack memory. This OBJ can access some or not. Now, this is the question. What do you think about it? Can we access OBJ dot sum? Sum is the static method which is available inside the common memory allocation. As we know that okay, static methods cannot be st stored inside the object. It will hold, it will take somewhere inside the memory and that memory location is called common memory allocation okay 
the moment you try to access obj.sum let's see can i access obj.sum or not so i simply say obj. Uh, sum method fine obj.sum and if you try to access let's see and i comment this line otherwise i'll get null pointer and let's see obj.sum it will give you sum here we are able to do that so there is a concept guys that static method can be accessed by null references that doesn't matter just because of it stores a common memory allocation inside the memory and it does not hold any memory allocation inside the object it's a free memory it's a common memory so that's why obj can access some without any null pointer it does not relate it to any object it does not need any object creation so in that case it doesn't matter that obj is pointing to null or what that doesn't matter obj is just the reference which is available and then it will simply call the sum method but with obj.send which is non-static in nature this cannot be allowed for that we need a method so with the null reference the moment i try to access send method it will give you null pointer exception way so remember this thing it's a very very important concept okay okay so what else other than that some small thing that uh, i'll tell you let me tell you the fifth point that is equal to equal to and not equal to operator also you can apply for none so you simply write system dot outer print and if you write null equal to equal to none what will happen any idea null simply you think about your answer and then obviously you batch your answer null is equal to equal to null it will give you true or false if null is equal to equal to null it will give you true see it's giving you true okay so this keyword can be compared with null null can be compared with null with equal to equal to operator but with not equal to what do you think with not equal to null is not equal to null condition true or false condition is false so null is equal to null so in that case null is not equal to null it will give you false simple right so this also can be compared like this so this is the fifth concept another concept some basic things guys that what is the default value of a string so if you okay you simple write okay null can be assigned to str is equal to null right it can be assigned to any wrapper class it can be assigned to let's see integer okay integer int is equal to sorry integer i or i1 is equal to this also can be null it can be assigned for double wrapper also double let's see d1 is equal to null this is also allowed okay now one interesting concept think about it can i type cast null into string it means what i'm saying is let's see if i write s1 is equal to null and i type cast this null into string like this okay see this is allowed and if you try to print the value of s1 what should be the output will it give you null pointer exception or it will give you null now see it carefully at line number 48 the output will be null it will not give you any null pointer exception okay and if you try to append anything over here let's see i try to append naveen okay and then you run see it's saying null and naveen together null naveen right if you try to append anything if you try to append any integer also now it will be one two three i mean I, one two three is available in the form of a string but it can be appended without any problem and now if you say system dot order print ln if you try to write s1 dot length method what should be the output i have written s1 plus one two three and then i try to get length will it give you length or what now see it will give you null pointer exception now 
okay so don't be confused that okay this null will become a string that's fine this null will become a string it can be appended but any action cannot be performed any s1 dot length or s1 dot see if you try to access s1 dot character at so you must be thinking that s1 dot character at let's see zero position it should give you n <clears throat> because you have already converted into null it means null with double quotes null with double quotes and if you try to access s1 dot character at zero it should give you n ideally but it will give you what it will give you null pointer exception okay let me comment this dot length and then let's see see it's giving you null pointer exception at line number 50 as well so any operation <clears throat> any string operation any string manipulation operation cannot be done after type casting into <clears throat> string value okay so remember this thing can i type cast into a uh, wrapper integer and double yes of course you can do that as well so i simply say that okay uh, i simply write this integer let's see i2 this is possible okay this i can do that same thing possible for double as well that i also i can do it so i simply write let's see uh, double d2 this is possible right so i2 and d2 okay will hold null value okay so null can be typecasted into integer and double okay like this also but remember guys static versus non-static this is something very important topic and most of the people they give the wrong answer for that okay so this is really some cool facts how many facts around yeah five six six facts are about okay null in java and i hope you got something about that so if someone is asking you about null okay be ready for <coughs> for the answers okay so that's all for this particular video guys thanks for watching the Bean automation labs let me know in case of any issues you can write down your questions and your suggestions or if you know some more thing about null please write down in the comment section thank you so much guys